Well, anybody enjoy their food this past week? Anybody have leftovers? That's the part you may not like all, you know, gosh, we're going to be eating turkey for the next 12 days. I don't know. Got my, my box lunch is already ready. You know, I love Thanksgiving. I love our time when we can gather together with family and friends and, and, uh, and enjoy just a pause uh, in, our, in our normal hectic schedule and truly have a, a time for, for saying thanks. Uh, kind of our tradition in our family is, uh, you know, we'll get up, we'll uh, watch the Macy's Day Parade. I'll, uh, we'll watch the dog show. Anybody watch the dog show? Uh, there's a few of you out there, and we're always disappointed in the one they pick because we had another cute dog that we had picked out. My wife uh, labors uh, in the kitchen with a few of our kids who love to, to make pies, pie, pumpkin pies. I just want to make, make, it, make a poll here. How many of you love the pumpkin pies? All right. How many of you are pecan pie people? You know, what is this? None of this downward stuff. Uh, any, uh, anybody do a fruit pie of any sort? Yeah. And uh, how many of you have a cherry pie on Thanksgiving? What? Am I the only one that likes to have that? Anyway, we didn't have that this year, but that's kind of what we do. But then we sit around our table and we just, uh, uh, we pray obviously and, and just thank God for his, his meal. And this year we just added the extra component. Um, and I told them, uh, our children this a couple of weeks ago, I want you to write down 100 things you're thankful for. 100 things. <laughs> You know, we, it, we, we at least get off to a good start because if they just name everybody in their family, that's at least 10 right there. Um, and so then they expand from that. And, uh, and we went around and shared um, the, in the, you know, after we had eaten uh, the various things. And some things were repeated on several of the, uh, uh, the list and some were unique to the individual. But it was just a, a good time to sit back and say, you know, what is it that's in my life? that if it wasn't there, I would be missing something. You know, a person, um, some type of uh, uh, blessing, some event, some other type of thing. And, and uh, I, I asked the kids afterwards, after we read all uh, 100 times, you know, um, eight of us, um, I said, just imagine all of those things on your list disappeared tomorrow. Could you find another 100 things to be thankful for? And after they had done this, they didn't think they could do 100, but after they had, they had accomplished that, they, they answered this way. They said, I think we could. Because if you really pause just long enough to say thank you for the various things in our life, the people in our life, those who have passed already and those who are very present, um, the opportunities that you have, we have far more to be thankful for than we ever acknowledge. Because if it wasn't there... And maybe that's how you can go out about your day. I don't know if I can come up with a hundred things. Just imagine the things that you're having even in today's uh, life. Uh, if it wasn't there, what you'd be missing. Well, in the midst of celebrating Thanksgiving, it's easy to lose sight of why we need to pause and be thankful. And, and, uh, and some would think that I'm supposed to start on a Christmas message already. But I've got some leftovers from Thanksgiving I wanted to share. Uh, the one verse that predates any American holiday uh, that helps us understand as believers how we have a, uh, a heart of thanksgiving is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. So that's kind of my theme verse today where I want to focus. It's one that you ought to put to memory. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. It's not uncommon for people to ask me, I'm, I'm really seeking God's will. I want to know God's will for my life. And they're looking for some clarity in a particular decision in their, in their life. You know, am I supposed to go to that school or that school? Am I supposed to take that job or this job? Am, am I supposed to move to here or go there? I want to know God's will. I don't know all the ways God's going to direct you, but I can be certain this is God's will because it tells us in the scriptures to, what is God's will. Give thanks in all circumstances. Are you accomplishing that in your life in a way to fulfill God's will? Because that is a God's will for every one of us. To be thankful for all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I want to just take uh, just a few moments that we've got today to focus on, on this particular area of thanksgiving. 
I want us to, to think about the, the attitude of gratitude in here and, and to realize uh, the three reasons gratitude matters. If we're to be thankful in all circumstances, you ought to ask a question first, why? And then you can get to the, uh, the level of knowing how. But why does it even matter that we are thankful? For, you know, perhaps you can go your whole day and not be thankful for anything. I'm sure I've accomplished that on many occasions, not be thankful. Ever. I'm complaining about things. Why doesn't this happen or why doesn't that take place? But, but, you know, we go through our life without thanksgiving, without being thankful at times. So why does it matter that we are thankful? If it's God's will for us to be thankful, why? And I'll just give you three observations that I find in Scripture. And the very first one is this, is that gratitude eliminates arrogance. Like, well, I'm not arrogant. I believe it's almost the exact opposite of thanksgiving is arrogance. Because what is thanksgiving? To, to say thank you is to humble yourself, realizing that without that, I would be less than. I would have less, or I, I would be lacking in some way. An arrogant person doesn't thank anybody because they think they are self-sufficient uh, in and of themselves. They don't need anybody. They don't need anything. Everything that happens in their life is based on their own ability, their own uh, energy. And so they get real puffed up and arrogant. Gratitude eliminates arrogance. When we're thankful for all, uh, in all circumstances, we are in a position that is far more godly and eliminates that arrogant or sinful, prideful attitude that we can have. In Romans chapter 1, verse 21, listen to these words. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. Someone who is apart from God doesn't thank God for his blessings. They don't even acknowledge that he's, he's real, even though in every human heart, and I believe this verse uh, alludes to this, every human heart knows there's a God. There's something beyond us that has created us. Even though they knew God, they do not honor him as God or give thanks to him. Interesting, he puts thanks right here in the forefront. Because somebody who does not thank God chooses to ignore God and have an arrogant attitude as if I don't need God in my life. I'm self-sufficient. What they don't realize, and even in that position, there is a common grace that God has given every one of us. There's a, a salvation grace that, that gives us eternal life, but there's a common grace for every one of us. Every one of us is breathing, whether we acknowledge God or not. He's the one who gave us breath in our lungs. Did we not just sing that? There are things in our lives that God gives us that we don't even recognize. And, and this arrogant attitude that every one of us can, can have in our lives. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Paul shows the condition of all people here. Sinful, selfish. Ignoring God, living for themselves. Arrogance is a pride that pushes others away and lifts oneself up to a level of self-reliance and no need to be thankful. No, no position of gratitude. If people were bold enough, when they got up for their acceptance speeches at award shows, they wouldn't spend any time thanking anybody else. They would just say, well, I put all the effort in. It was my talents. It was my uh, everything that I've done. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Most people aren't that bold, so they at least acknowledge there were some others that contributed to the success of that, that artist or, or that team uh, award. When things go well, it's easy to fall into this prideful independence, sophisticated self-sufficiency. I mean, when your health is good, oh, it's because, you know, I eat well, I exercise, I do the, the right things. When the job is stable, it's because I'm a hard worker. I do what I'm supposed to do. When relationships are peaceful, it's because I have massaged those relationships in such a way that everything is, is good. You must have it all together. And even as believers, as saved people by God, sometimes we fail to show gratitude and we take life for granted. In the book of Luke, chapter 17, it shares uh, an opportunity that Jesus had to, to heal some lepers. 
There were 10 lepers, in fact, and it says, lifting up their voices, they were saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And so Jesus said to them, go and show yourself to the priest. And the text indicates that they got up, even while they still had leprosy, they got up and began to walk towards where the priest was. And as they were in motion, every one of them, all 10 of them, were cleansed of their leprosy. They were healed. Then it goes on, it says, then one of them, there were 10 of them, but one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and praised God with a loud voice. He fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving thanks to him. And he was the Samaritan, it says. Then Jesus answered, were not 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? You know, that's about right in our lives, I would suspect. Perhaps if you had leprosy and you were healed, maybe you would have been the one that comes back. But really, this 10% concept is probably where a lot of us fall. That we thank God for about 10% of what we participate in. How many of you pray before a meal? It's good, you should. Thank you for the meal. I like the old Presbyterian approach from over 100 years ago. They didn't pray before the meal. They prayed after the meal, thanking God for what they just consumed. We pray now that we just pray it's good. You know, but we ought to be thankful that it's there. But thinking about this 10%, we thank him for the food. We, we might pause and thank him for the family. We might thank him for our job, but then we move on. We forget everything else. When is the last time you truly did thank God for the breath in your lungs? Or do you take that for granted? Because certainly it could be taken away. When's the last time you truly sat back and, and said, thank you, God, that I have a mind that can think through these things that are in my life. You've given me a mental capacity. Sometimes we get arrogant with what we know, but you realize that is a gift of God to be able to comprehend. All of us probably have a loved one or someone we've known that has lost their cognitive ability, and, and we hope that we don't get there. But do we thank God for the cognitive ability we have right now? The way to process. Do we thank God for the movement of our body? The younger you are, the, the less you, are, um, you consider that you may lose that ability that you have. I watched one of the testimonies of, the, of a senior uh, football player at Liberty who was the backup quarterback, but at one point, apparently, he was the starting quarterback and he got injured. Changed the trajectory of his whole life and career. Liberty got another quarterback in, and that quarterback excelled. Not that the other quarterback's uh, uh, abilities were diminished other than he had to heal through that process, but by the time he was healed, he wasn't going to be the starting quarterback. Some of you who are older understand what it means to lose your physical abilities. There's more aches and pains along the way, and sometimes you get to where you just can't do what you used to do. But how often do we pause and thank God for what we are able to do? Are we like those nine lepers who are healed, but we just move on? Do you thank God for your restaurant server, your postal service employee? Thank God for postal service employees. They work hard. We always notice when something's late, but we appreciate what they do to get it to us. The stock clerks at the grocery store that makes it convenient for you to pick up groceries. If you're not growing them in the backyard, then somebody else has already done all that work for you. And you just have to, you can just get online and have it bring it to your house. Are you thankful? See, without gratitude, we show a side of arrogance or entitlement. We often complain about our situation without realizing the blessing of having a situation. You might complain that, that you know, I don't have the right kind of coat. Have you thanked God for the shirt you get to wear? You know, you go to the closet and say, I don't find the right kind of shoes. Are you thankful you have two feet to have sh two shoes on? I I'm serious. If you put yourself in, in a position of someone else who, who is lacking some of these things, how many of you have ever complained about traffic? I tell you, that's why I moved here, to get out of Atlanta. But have you ever thought in the middle of the traffic, thank you, Lord, that I have a car that I can drive and I'm not walking down the street? Because a car is a blessing. It's not an entitled position that we have. James chapter 1 verse 17 tells us every good gift 
Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. So therefore, if arrogance suppresses gratitude, gratitude is what diminishes arrogance. Henry Ward Beecher said this, Pride slays thanksgiving, but a humble mind is the soil out of which thanks naturally grows. A proud man is seldom a grateful man, for he never thinks he gets as much as he deserves. But we ought to be in a position of humility and be thankful for every good and perfect gift God gives us. Gratitude eliminates arrogance. That's why one, one of the reasons it matters to give thanks in all circumstances. The second thing I find in Scripture is this. Gratitude actually encourages action. When we're thankful, we get moving. I want you to write down this verse, Colossians 3.17. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. You realize when, when we do things, whether we do this or we do that, we ought to do it for the glory of God. And when we are doing it for the glory of God, we're showing him thanksgiving that we have the ability to do it. That he's called us to it. He's put us in, a, in action. Those who get frustrated that things don't go their way. Those who get frustrated they don't have what other people have. Sit back and do nothing. They, they limit action. They get in a, a state of depression where they're, they're immobile. But when you have an attitude of gratitude, you're eliminating the arrogance. It actually uh, puts you towards action. I have one little quote that's in a, a little booklet that I flip through once in a while that says, if you're ever in a state of, 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 of depression or, or discouragement, get up from your couch, it says, go across the street and help somebody in need. It'll change your perspective. When we're just looking inward all the time, we don't have a, a position of thanksgiving. So when, when we get out of our prideful position or our, uh, our de de depressed position and say, you know, God's given me far more than I deserve. So therefore, how can I move and glorify him to even bless somebody else? Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. How does one thank God for his blessings? You move forward in the abilities that he has granted. You move forward in the calling that he's giving you. How do you appreciate the meal that was provided on Thursday? You eat it. I'm thankful. That, well, I'm always in this position. Let me just be very frank and very transparent with you. Every meal that's been made for me, I'm thankful for. Because I didn't have to make it. I'm not a good cook. Now, should I cook once in a while? Absolutely, I understand that. But every meal that's been provided, I eat it because I'm thankful for it. Even if I have to eat the green beans, I'll, I'll struggle through those at times. How do you show gratitude for God's grace? You live in the grace and you share that grace with others. How do you show appreciation for your health? Why don't you go visit somebody who doesn't have the blessing of that health right now, who's struggling? How do you show appreciation and, and gratitude for, for the wealth that you have? And, and you think, well, I'm not wealthy. Do you have resources that meet your needs? Be thankful for that. And perhaps share some of that with somebody who, who needs some help. How do you show appreciation uh, for the joy that you have? You go and use that joy by encouraging someone who is uh, lacking joy. How do you show appreciation for the God-given gifts that you've been given? You use those gifts for his glory and not for your own personal fame. How do you show appreciation for his faithful provision in your life? By being faithful in your uh, giving to, back to him in his ministry. How do you show appreciation for those who've invested in your spiritual growth? And every one of us have had people in our lives who've prayed for us, who have invested in us, who've shared some wisdom, who've shown us the scriptures. How do we uh, show gratitude for that? You pay it forward by discipling other people. You sit down with them and love on them and, and, and share the scriptures with them. Let me share a story that I, I, I ran across in, in one of my counseling books. There was a depressed individual who had been in counseling. 
And she, she says, I have no friends. There's nobody who likes me. No one helps me. No one ever supports me. In very depressed position. And the counselor thought for a few moments and then gave this assignment. He tells her, between now and the time that we meet again, I want you to say thank you every time someone does something for you. If they smile at you, you say thank you. If they open the door for you, you say thank you. If they bag your groceries or they carry them to your car, stop and say thank you. If they let you into the line of traffic as you merge onto the road, even though they may not hear you, you say out loud, thank you. Well, the reluctant counselee said, I won't have many opportunities to say thank you, but I'll try. After two weeks, the depressed woman returned to the office and with a smile immediately said, thank you. I can't stop saying it. I, 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 I must have said it a thousand times since I saw you last. It all started when I left your office. The person at the door opened the door and let me out of the building. And, and I paused and I said, well, thank you. It made him smile. I tried it again with a taxi driver who then told me, thank you for saying thank you. He said he had never heard anybody tell him thank you for driving them someplace. Moment after moment, there was someone who actually helped me that I recognized, and I thanked them. A few days later, having brought many smiles to others, I was walking past a homeless shelter food kitchen and decided to go in and volunteer serving hot lunches. I was thankful that I was not in a position that I needed them to serve me, but I was able to serve them, and, and many of them told me, thank you. I feel great today. Because of your assignment. I'm not sure why it worked though. The counselor said to her. The reason is because in the past you were looking for others to meet your needs. And you had little gratitude even if they did meet your needs. Now you've noticed that everything that was there before. But you didn't see it before. Because you were focused on the negative. But now with new eyes. You see the many blessings God has given you. In this life. It was Albert Einstein who said a hundred times a day. I remind myself that my inner and outer life. Depends on the labors of other people. Living and dead. That I must exert myself in order to give. In the measure that I have received. And I am still receiving. This is an, an action that's portrayed from an attitude of gratitude. Here's the third observation in scripture, why it matters that we have gratitude. It's gratitude expands your adoration. Gratitude promotes worship of God. The cornerstone of worship is expressed in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15. Thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. God gives us far more than we, we, uh, we deserve, and he actually gives us far more than we even recognize. Just to pause and, and see all the blessings God has given us is a valued gift. The gift of grace in Jesus is the starting point of worship and thanksgiving. His profound gift should be met with equal profound gratitude. We sing it, but do we truly believe it? One theologian said this, our thanks should be as fervent for mercies received as our petitions for mercies sought. Oh God, have mercy on me. I need help from you. We're pleading for God to answer our prayers. When he meets those prayers, do we spend as much time thanking him and worshiping him for the answers of those prayers? Our prayer list is always very lengthy. And, and rightfully so. But our thanksgiving list ought to be just as lengthy. Perhaps some of your prayer times ought to be. Today, Father, I'm not going to ask for another thing. Just for today, I want to just thank you. And perhaps this will take 15, 20, 30 minutes, maybe an hour. But I just want to list the things that I recognize that you have blessed me with. And I just want to say thank you. 
If I never received another blessing from you, I would be content in all circumstances because I am thankful for everything you've done in my life. Gratitude expands adoration. Listen to these words that, that links thanksgiving with worship. Beautifully linked in Scripture. Psalm 7, verse 17. I will give thanks, no, I will give to the Lord the thanks due to his righteousness. And I will sing praise to the name of the Lord the Most High. Thanksgiving and praise are linked together. In Psalm 28, verse 7, the Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart uh, trust, and I am helped. My heart exalts, worships, you know, uh, praises. And with my song, I give thanks to him. Worship and thanksgiving. Of course, a, 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 fair, a fairly familiar verse to most of you is Psalm 100, verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. These are verses that we will say that we embrace them. Worship is prompted from a heart of thanksgiving. There's a hymn in your hymn book, 585, called Count Your Blessings, written over 100 years ago in 1897. I want to just read some of these, these words for us, uh, for your blessing. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings. Name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Yes. Does, your, the, does the cross seem heavy you were called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will keep singing as the days go by. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your blessings. See what God has done. Man, those are vital truths that we need to be reminded of. For so many in our lives, we, we get distracted. We get discouraged. We, we, we look every which way because not everything aligns up. When you're trying to put a puzzle piece together, and you, or, you know, puzzle together, and you can't find all the pieces, you get frustrated. But this is like our life. We've got so many parts. Not everything fits according to our vision. But when we pause to thank God for the pieces he's put there and let him work out the details, we can be thankful. Why do we count our blessings? Because they are countless because our God is limitless and worthy of our praise. How many of you brought something into this world when you were born? You, you had your, your suitcase loaded with stuff you wanted to, to carry with you. How many of you are going to take it with you when you go? Everything that we've been granted in this life has been a blessing of God. To grow, to learn, to see how, how wonderful he is. To, to depend upon him and not depend upon ourselves. Sometimes you go, man, I don't have what I need here. And, and I want this and it's not happening. How am I going to survive? How am I going to be sustained? And it's amazing me with our limited perspective how much we think we need. When God is ultimately all we need. And he will not let you lack any good thing. He knows your needs far better than you do. So when we always look out, we ought to stop and start looking up. God, you will supply our needs. You'll make sure that what we have is everything that I should be content with. How many of you have ever, ever heard of the story of George Mueller? George Mueller, an uh, uh, incredible story. I encourage you to pick up that book. It's not very long, but just a, a little uh, uh, biography of his life or an autobiography of his life. And uh, he was in uh, Bristol, England and, and had an orphanage. He did several other ministries, but in the orphanage. And, and his whole thought was, I, I don't need to go to the world 
for help for my life. I will go to the Lord who has more than enough resources. And every day he would pray for, to, to meet his own personal needs, to meet the needs of the orphans, to meet the needs of all the ministry that he was involved in. And he was involved in a whole lot of things. And, and he would just pray, God, you meet our needs. And he would record these prayers and he would record the answers. And I don't recall how many, but I think it's over like 50,000 prayers that were recorded and answered over the lifetime uh, of his ministry. I mean, as simple as, you know, uh, this morning, you know, we've got orphans that are hungry and we don't have any milk. And those are back in the days, this is back in the 1800s when uh, you didn't go to the grocery store and just pick up cold milk and put it in your refrigerator. This is what a daily deliverance of milk through, through the truck that would come and in little bottles. Some of you actually uh, maybe remember some of that early in our, our culture. So you just pray, God, just meet our needs. We don't have enough to feed the orphans. We have no milk. And lo and behold, God would have a milk truck break down in front of the orphanage. And the, the truck driver says, we got to get rid of it because it'll spoil if it just stays on the truck waiting for somebody to come by. AAA wasn't available then. And so all the milk was just donated to the orphanage. I mean, stories like that over and over and over and over and over again. Sometimes we run to Amazon to fix our need before we pray to the Lord to see if he would meet our need. You know, the Lord is good. If you want to be a better worshiper, just start being a greater uh, thanker of him. Just be thankful for what he can do and go to him. We acknowledge God's great work and are humbled at the enormity of his grace. Our gratitude will expand to pure adoration and worship when we count our many blessings. This worship grows beyond a time and a place. Too often we, we categorize worship as 11 o'clock on Sunday. When worship, that's when we corporately gather, but worship for a believer is a lifestyle. It's all the time. If worship is about Thanksgiving, I hope that we're not just thankful on Sunday at 11 o'clock. It becomes who we are, living, grateful worshipers. When we live as worshipers, the world take note, it takes notice because they notice that we, we celebrate often. Wherever we are, we're celebrating what the Lord has done. We consistently appreciate all that God is doing daily. We're constantly joyful. I know some people who are joyful all the time irritate some of you. Why are they so happy all the time? Are they on drugs? No, no, they just love the Lord. I just saw the other day, there was a lady, what was she, about 100, 109 or something? And they just said, you know, what's, you tell us about your life. And she says, oh, the Lord's just been so good to me. You know, that, how do you get to 109? You're thankful. You're a worshiper of, of the Lord. We love Christ with all our hearts and the world will take notice. We invite others to join in a close relationship with God when we're worshipers on a daily basis. We have an attitude of gratitude when we're fully engaged in worship. Now, a lot's been said about our country and about the formation and foundation of Thanksgiving. There's a lot of debate in our culture. But I'm thankful for uh, some of the original documents that came at the beginning. And William Bradford, who was a follower of Jesus Christ, you ought to read uh, of Plymouth Plantation. He wrote these words. Thus, out of the small beginnings, greater things have been produced by his hand that made all things out of nothing. And gives, uh, and gives beings to all things, be, uh, and gives being to all things that are. And as one small candle may light a thousand, so the light here kindled hath shone unto many. He has many words of wisdom there, but thinking about just the, the limited we may see or may have now, God can multiply that when we just trust his hand. Thanksgiving is... It's not fundamentally a once-a-year holiday, but a lifestyle of God's people coming together to worship the one who provides all. We celebrate Thanksgiving every time we get together and pray and sing and hear God's word and encourage one another. Whether we're in a small group or in a large corporate gathering here, or you're just sitting uh, with your spouse or some friends at, at your apartment or home, it is Thanksgiving when we acknowledge the hand of our Lord. I wonder if you'll do this with me. If you're sitting next to somebody you know, maybe they're, they're a spouse or a friend, just grab their hand for a moment and look at them. And I want you to say to them, I'm thankful for you. 
friends and family, loved ones, are a gift to us. And we take them for granted too often. God is present and we take him for granted too often. But just to look at somebody in the eyes and say, I'm thankful for you, makes all the difference. Every day, every moment, acknowledge the presence of God's gifts and acknowledge the presence of God and be a thankful worshiper. It'll eliminate your arrogance. It'll motivate you to action and it will enhance your adoration for him.